I just finished making this electronic edge detector. Now the way that that works is put it in your machine chuck, let's say you're using a mill, put it in your mill chuck and the body up here becomes connected to your entire machine and your job, whatever is on your machine. But this little point down here, you can see it's isolated by some black plastic. It's not connected. Once it becomes connected, then it lights up. So we can demonstrate that with just a, a clip here. And when we touch down here, you can see the light coming on. So it wasn't too hard to make, uh, especially the machining part is quite easy to make. And we're going to go through the steps on how I did that. Okay, let's talk about the electronics first. I'll take this apart, get the end cap off. My battery's a little sticky, so I just put a little pencil magnet in there to get it out of there. And then the module that contains the electronic parts. First of all, this contains an LED. You can see that has two little legs and this is just a white LED. You can get them in red or green, various different colors. So that's in there. And also we have a 200 ohm resistor. I put that in there because I'm not sure what that LED was designed for and it was quite bright when I put a 12 volt uh, battery on it so I cut it down a little bit with a 200 ohm resistor. You may not need that. Uh, just check it out and see if it looks overly bright and then maybe there is some kind of a problem with it. Okay so those two things are in here. There's also a brass plug at each end. Now, copper would have been better, but it didn't have any copper, so I took this out of a garden hose nozzle. I didn't want to throw it away because it was brass, and it turned out to be just the right size I needed to put these little end plugs. I don't know if you can see this or not, these little brass end plugs at either end of this tube. Now, the tube itself is just a piece of clear tubing. And we'll get into the sizes of all this stuff and how to put that together and in just a second here. Here's the side view of the canister that contains the uh, electronic components. So I've tried to label this and uh, I think I've covered all the information. I certainly hope I haven't forgotten anything. That uh, letter X drill goes all the way through this main body. The spring on here, uh, you can vary that uh, in diameter and in length. In fact, if, if you get your parts a little too long or a little too short, your electronic components parts, uh, you can make up the difference with that spring. So you'll have to see how it works out and maybe you'll have to change the length of that spring. The OD on this is quite important because it touches your workpiece and it touches it on the side. So in order to reference the center of this, which is what you really need, you have to crank over 100 thou, which is a nice even number to remember. If you can't have the 0.2 inch OD here, then you may end up having to crank over 90 thou or 50 thou or whatever. So try to get that right and on here, I, I ground this so it would be very, very close to what it should be. You may not have the capability to do that, but I would certainly do it if you can. There still are a few things that we have to talk about. <clears throat> These holes, they're one-eighth holes. And they're spaced every 60 degrees all the way around this diameter. Now we need to know laterally, back and forth, where to put those holes. So if you put your battery and your, uh, <clears throat> your electronic module in here and put your cap on and down at the other end here 
if we slide a rod into here, we can find out the measurement from the end to where that module is. And it should be, oh, probably somewhere in this area here where you see the holes. But that's how you can find out where you need to put the holes because the holes need to be somewhere fairly close to where the LED is at the end of that uh, electronic module. Now the other thing we have to figure out is when we press our uh, plastic dowel or whatever we use into here for isolating this rod, uh, we don't want to press it too far. So we can use the same technique to figure that out. Uh, just measure and see where your, uh, your module comes to here. And of course we don't want to press the uh, plastic in so far that it uh, would push the light back or cover the light up. So we want the uh, plastic to come to oh, maybe right around here, maybe a hundred thou or so less than where the lights were. And uh, that needs to be a fairly tight fit. So I use the six or seven thousandths press fit to put that in there. Now, once that's in there, you can face that off and you need to drill the hole for this rod. Now the rod has to be, or should be, uh, 0.2 inches in diameter at the very end here, like from here to here. But the rest of the rod going in can be any size that you like. So try to work that out. Uh, you, you have to look for what size drills you have and uh, figure out a press fit for the rest of that rod. So it doesn't necessarily have to be this, this 200 here. It could be a little bit bigger than that. You could use a nominal size of some sort. But don't forget, this has to be the 200 because it makes it so easy to calculate uh, when you're uh, taking a hit on the side of something. For anyone who doesn't know how to determine which lead is what, in other words, which lead is positive and which lead is negative on the LED, what we've done is we've connected the red clip to what I think is the positive lead and the black clip to what I think is the negative lead on the LED. Now we take the battery, this is the positive end of the battery, usually marked in red, and when I connect the red to that end and the black to this end of the battery, if the light goes on, we've got it right. And we did. Now if we had it reversed, we could simulate that by turning the battery around and make the connection again, nothing. So that's how you tell which lead is what. You're going to need a 12 volt battery. I ordered this one from the internet and found that it was just slightly bigger than uh, the Duracell version. It seemed to slide in a little bit easier, but this is the type of battery that you will require to run your edge finder. If you'd like to be notified of other new modifications, please click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.